trade rumors have been swirling out of control about the Indianapolis Colts and Kansas City Chiefs cornerback Legarius Sneed. So what's true and what isn't regarding the rumors? And what's the likelihood of a Sneed trade to Indy now? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Horseshoe Huddle podcast presented by Fan Nation on SI.com, part of the Fans First Sports Network. My name is Andrew Moore, and as always, I'm joined here by my partner in crime and fellow analyst at Horseshoe Huddle, Drake Wally. Drake, what an absolutely wild weekend, you know, uh, just specifically around these these trade rumors of, of Legere Sneed and the Indianapolis Colts. So many different reports from so many different uh, uh, media outlets, uh, credible, credible media members as well and and it just seems like it's hard to believe there's been a lot of other reports out there from random twitter accounts uh guys that you've never heard from before so i i know colts fans have kind of gotten up into a tizzy but it's it's a pretty wild situation or has been a wild situation all weekend long yeah and it's it's there was kind of some elements of this during the Jonathan Taylor saga last season, but never, I don't think anywhere near the, well, they said this, but that's way different than this guy that said that that's way different than this. It's almost like every single person, even the reputable people have just a little bit different of, of, of a story, you know, and it's really interesting to see all this unfold, but we're going to try to kind of sift through this uh, the best that we can just to help fans kind of understand who's saying what, because we know some of these people personally and, you know, we kind of know how they report as well. So hopefully we can help a little bit. Exactly. And, and, you know, I mean, I, I, I I've been talking to stats, Matt, all weekend about this and, and, there, there's a reason why I haven't talked or said really much publicly on this is because there is just it's it's a big like who do you believe and and, and you don't want to to report things that you're not 100 percent certain of and and you want to just make sure to get everyone's what everyone's uh, uh, reporting because a lot of times it's likely right in the middle. Let's look at the chat already. Got a five dollar super chat from Truett for all that's good and holy. Can we please please get a deal done with Sneed? Uh, uh, we'll we'll see. Truett, we'll we'll definitely tell you what what the current situation is cfo patrick won't make it tonight folks for the live show but here's the chef you're being 100 wrong definitely talk about Schefter tonight yim thank you so much for the two dollar super chat as always been waiting for this all weekend thanks as always we really appreciate you in here as well of course i'm gonna highlight uh our good buddy stats matt what's up time to talk people off a ledge i had definitely had to do that with stats matt over the weekend so uh it's gonna be a lot of fun tonight guys so so what we're gonna do well I'll just lay it out here for you. We're going to talk about, make sure we lay out all the reports uh, about the Indianapolis Colts and Legereus Sneed because we want to see all those different points of views. We want to make sure we're getting all the information and, and or accurate with this. Uh, then, then we're going to kind of go into what what I've been the information I've been able to gather and and where things have st- where things currently stand and why why they stand this and ultimately uh, uh, about how this affects the Colts. Plus, we have other Colts news that we're going to talk about. It's going to be a wild episode tonight but if you haven't done so please follow us on all of our socials like horseshoe huddle on facebook follow at colts on fn on x and subscribe to the horseshoe huddle youtube channel hit that bell so you know when drake and i go live every monday and thursday night or for special breaking news episodes so you never miss us and if you can't catch us on youtube wherever you listen to podcasts we're on there as well apple spotify google so make sure you subscribe and give us a five-star review on there as well so drake enough of me yapping let's get right into it the is Legarius Sneed coming to the Indianapolis Colts? So, so let's 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 talk about this here. First, want to give a shout out to Colts House. Thank you so much for the two dollar super chat, buddy. No kid gloves. Be honest about the direction. That's exactly yeah. what we are going to do too, tonight. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna provide. We're both gonna provide you with as much information as we possibly can all this because guys at the end of the day we want you to be informed we don't want you to have uh uh, to get your hopes up about things that aren't going to be happening or be misled in in any other way so colt's house that's exactly what we're going to do thank you so much for the super chat so so let drake let's let's start from the very top let's start with uh what kind of kicked these this thing off on saturday morning and that's our former former teammate here at horseshoe huddle now with a to z sports destin adams so destin adams put out the report that the colts uh were finalizing a deal uh to get legerious need uh to trade for legerious need from the chiefs and and i want to put this out there as well he never said that deal the deal wasn't was done 
You know, they said he said they were ironing out the details uh, that that it hadn't been done yet, but it was close. OK, I think a lot of people have gone in uh, uh, guns ablaze and say, well, you said this was a done deal. That's not the case. OK, and I, and I want to make sure that, that we give Destin uh, the proper kudos and make sure everyone knows that that. Destin never said it was a done deal. He said it was close. Uh, but as we move on, uh, other people have other reports have started to come out. Let's let's for, let's focus in on the local indie media. Drake, starting with Stephen Holder of ESPN. Now, Stephen Holder of ESPN said that 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 there were the Colts weren't close to a trade that they had looked into it and and certain contacted the Chiefs about it earlier in the in the week last week, uh, but ultimately it didn't get very far in in the uh, 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 negotiating process or, or anything like that. Same with Nate Atkins of the Indy Star. Nate Atkins came out with a piece today in the Indy Star saying that same exact thing. You know, the Colts checked in on Legereus Sneed, but it didn't get much farther than that. And that's why the Colts have pivoted last week to re-signing their own guys fairly quickly after that. Now, you look at the national writers, you know, Today on Pat McAfee's show, uh, Pat McAfee asked Adam Schefter of ESPN uh, uh, if he had any information, and and Schefter came out and said point blank that the Colts and 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 the Chiefs had had no deal on the table. They hadn't really even discussed it, uh, anything like that. So uh, that was a pretty bold statement by Adam Schefter. Then you look at uh, another report from a national insider and in Diana Diana Rossini from the Athletic, you know, and she she thinks things progressed quite a bit farther than that. Talking about how it was the Vikings, the Patriots, the Titans, and the Colts that had all been in on the situation with Legarius Need, uh, and then coming from that that the Vikings and the Patriots dipped out. The Titans were very very close to a trade for Legereus Sneed, and she actually had the tweet written up before the Chiefs, or I'm sorry, the Titans came to a deal with Calvin Ridley, and that kind of made them take a step back. And as Rossini said, there's nothing close right now, but, and if something does happen, uh, it'll be closer to draft time. She thinks that the leader in the clubhouse would be the Indianapolis Colts, but she doesn't see anything imminent right now. And, and, and from that, uh, uh, Rossini said that that Legereus Sneed does want to reset the cornerback market because guys, not only do the Colts would the Colts have to trade for Sneed, uh, an extension would be required because he is on the franchise tag. He wants a long term extension, and and from all reports, that extension would be at over twenty million dollars in average annual value. He wants to reset the cornerback market. I think the highest paid cornerback in the NFL is either at twenty one or twenty two million dollars, and I think that's. I think that's Denzel Ward with the Cleveland Browns, and I think I think Jalen Ramsey is right behind him. Stats, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, so those are kind of all the national reporters. So, guys, as you can see from, from guys like Destin, who, who we personally know, to other guys we personally know, like Nate Atkins, Stephen Holder, uh, Mike Chappell was, I forgot to even mention, Mike Chappell in there. Uh, Mike Chappell had talked about it where uh, the, 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 he didn't see a deal with Snead getting done either. You know, and that the Colts had already uh, gone and spent a lot of money uh, to retain their own. So from that to the national reporters, it just kind of shows a lot of different opinions and a lot of different reports have been out there. So, Drake, honestly, it's not surprising that a lot of Colts fans, you could either way you go about it, you could feel a certain way. And, and for these insiders as well, whichever information they're being fed. I mean, at the time, uh, depending on who you want to believe, they could have been right or they could have been wrong. Yeah. And, you know, a couple things. First, don't forget everybody that, and this isn't crapping on all of the national media, but a lot of the national media said Jeff Saturday was the front runner for the coach and Will Levis was going to be the quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. Great point. None of those things came close. And I promise you, neither one came even close to happening. Will Levis was a second round pick. Okay. So Remember that. Also remember that the Colts love to keep things tight lipped. Also, Jim Irsay loves to say stuff like, boy, that quarterback from Alabama sure would be great to have. They never had their eyes on Bryce Young. Did they evaluate him? Of course they did, but they had eyes the whole time for Anthony Richardson. Okay, so they love smoke and mirrors. What it tells me is that each one of these people, first off, everyone, they are good media members that we just discussed in this show. Okay, Destin Adams, Stephen Holder, Nate Atkins, they all know their stuff and they all have an end to the Colts organization. Now, the question is, 
who's the in because each one of these guys is getting told something completely different. That tells me the Colts are doing this exactly the way they want to. Okay. There's total confusion. There's total confusion out there. No one knows what the hell's going to happen at this point. And I'm not saying the Colts want bedlam, but they, they also want to be mixed up and kind of, kind of, you know, misty in their approach. And they don't want anyone to, to get a, a beat on what they're doing because that could affect how, how much someone offers Snead or something like that. It could break down the whole process. If even one little bit of definitive stuff gets out there. So it, it's it's going to be a game changing trade, everyone, regardless of if it happens or not. The Colts, while they're not going to have to give up the farm, and I said that in a tweet, and I didn't mean literally give up, you know, multiple first round picks. I just meant there's going to be a lot that you're going to have to give it, give for this, you know, and, and you, pieces of your future draft picks. They're going to have to go with Snead, okay, to the Chiefs while he comes to the Colts. So I think it would be one hell of a trade. I think at this point. The Colts need to do what they can to make it happen. They've drug it out really long. It's also still a long time until free agency and all of this is over, people. I mean, we're only in the middle of March. The draft isn't until the very, very end of April. You still have over a month, all right? Like Diana Rossini said, she's expecting it now to be more toward draft day when it happens. So get ready if to wait. If it does happen, If too. it happens at all, get ready to wait. You got to be patient. You're talking about millions and millions of dollars for one guy that's going to affect how much in the millions they can spend on other people. Okay. And now Julian Blackman, you know, is off with the Buffalo Bills. He's going to be visiting the Bills. So they've got that to, to, to deal with and worry about. So like they're, they're trying to put money where it needs to be and where they feel like it's best. It's going to take a long time. You're going to get a lot of smoke and mirrors and a lot of different things are going to come from good people in the media. And also at the end of the day, there's other people that are in this fight other than just the Colts. I want to give a shout out to Echo Warrior or I'm um, yeah, yeah, Echo Warrior for the five dollar super chat. Really appreciate it, buddy. Uh Echo Warriors is not gonna lie. I've had to I've had to pull back a lot on X <laughs> because I was way too stressed over the past two days, both in defending Destin and if this deal would go through. Guys, I, I know I know you guys, guys are all fans out there, but at the end of the day, it is football, okay? The, we got to put, put some priorities in this, and it looks like Echo Warrior, that's what you've done, you know? Did the right so, thing. Yeah, definitely yeah. definitely <laughs> pull back a little bit, and, and it's good that you have some, uh, uh, some self-control there, so really appreciate the support, buddy. Uh, thank you so much. It means a lot to Drake and I, and, and glad you were able Able to pull back and, and and kind of restrain yourself on there. So so with all those reports out, let's let's empty the notebook. As I said on 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 X, I was going to tell you everything that I heard, where the latest is, and that's what we're going to do. So Drake, this is what I think really happened. As far as Adam Schefter saying that the Colts never had any communication with the Kansas City Chiefs, I I don't believe that for a second. Yeah, uh, no. I I do think that 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 Adam Schefter is wrong in that area. And, and for a fact, I know that ever since the Andrew Luck saga in Indianapolis, uh, with him breaking the news, uh, Adam Schefter hasn't been viewed very uh, fondly by, by, by those inside the Colts organization ever since then. So it's fair. When, when looking at national, uh, insiders, I, I, Adam Schefter usually isn't the one, uh, uh, lately to be the one in, in the know on, on Colts. News. So, so you guys just remember that. Um, but, but what I think actually happened is I do, I think the Colts reached out to the Kansas city chiefs, uh, about seed. Absolutely. I think that did occur early last week, you know, when the free agency period started, uh, they, they did reach out to, to the chiefs, see, see what the compensation was going to be and, and also what the possibility was going to be there. Or as far as what 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 terms Legarius Steed was looking for in that contract, you know, and with with more and more reports, I highlighted Diana Rossini's report that he wants to be paid over twenty million a year. Uh, I, I I do not have the name of of the 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 Chiefs beat writer that also said this, but now this has been confirmed with multiple reports that that Legarius Steed wants to reset the cornerback market and. I know LeJerry Sneed is a very good cornerback, very good cornerback, but at the same time, you got to think about Chris Ballard and the Indianapolis Colts here. They always, they, what has Ballard told you for, for years now, the Colts set a price on a player and, and they don't go over that, especially with guys outside of the organization, because again, you don't know that player. It's a little bit different when you're dealing with your own, whether you like it or not, that's how the Colts do business. So, what I, I'm very confident is happening 
is that Legarius Sneed wanted to be the highest paid cornerback in the NFL. The Colts weren't willing to do that. And and the, the when, when Sneed said there wasn't any wiggle room, the Colts walked away. You know, uh, so I, I do think that that it's it's very it's, I don't think that this necessarily has gone uh, as far as as people think. Now, the other reports out there uh, that the Colts are very, very interested that, that this was almost getting done. You also have to remember the other teams that were involved, you know. The, the Tennessee Titans, a team that was very heavily involved. And as Di- Di- Diana Russini said, she almost sent the tweet out that the trade was going to be done. Well, who's one of the biggest rivals that was also said to be involved or at least called into check on Legereus Sneed? The Indianapolis Colts. Where's that information coming from? They get that that Brian, uh, Brian Windhorst. Uh, think about that for a second. You know, that, that very well could be coming from the Chiefs to try to drive interest up. Could be coming from Legereus Sneed's camp, in fact, to try to drive that interest back up. Because what have we always seen in the past? We've always seen, in, when it comes to free agency, so-and-so player is linked to the Colts. So-and-so player is linked to the Colts. A lot of times, guys, that's agents putting that out there because they see the Colts have a lot of cap space. They have a need in this area. They're going to put that out there to try to drive up the price for their client. It just happens. You also have to remember that Legereus Sneed was granted permission to uh, to find a trade, you know, to seek a trade. So that means his agents are out there talking to other teams, basically a de facto free agent, you know. Uh, so uh, that's what I think happened. Uh, is is that that a lot of this is coming from the Legarius Sneed camp rather than the Colts, uh, uh, and that's why when all these rumors started to take off, you saw the guys that the top, you saw the the reporters that the top guys in the Colts organization usually talk to and leak things out, like Stephen Holder, like Mike Chapel, especially Nate Atkins. Those are the guys that you're getting this stuff from Chris Bow, I would say Chris Bauer specifically because I don't want my words twisted that Chris Bauer told them this, but the higher levels of the organization. You know Jim Irsay has talked to Mike Chapel numerous times and given him information like that. So that's where this started coming from. The Colts kind of pushing back like, hey, this isn't us, you know? So it, just having that come from multiple sources, it's not like it's just one indie beat writer that's saying that, that makes it, that gives it more credibility in, in, in my eyes and, and talking with other people behind the scenes, that's what it was too. So the biggest sticking point with this was all money. You know, if Legereus Sneed eventually would have said like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I would, I would be fine with playing on 19, 20 million a year and, and being negotiable on that then I think the Colts would, would be open to it. And that's why, that's why, uh, uh, that's why I think, that's why I think that just saying shutting the door on this isn't, isn't like 100%, you know, but because Legereus Sneed and his camp have been kind of pushing all of this uh, uh, to try to drive up more interest, drive up that price, that that's more, that seems more likely than, the Colts, the, the Colts were trying to trying to win a bidding war. Because when was the last time the Colts actually got into a bidding war? It's just not how they operate, you know. Also, I want to bring this up as well. You know, at Sneed and the Chiefs trying to gain leverage for that. You got to look of, uh, at, at something that maybe not a lot of people notice, but the Chiefs restructure Patrick Mahomes' contract this offseason too. The reason for that, I think, is because if they if if Sneed was traded. The Chiefs wouldn't have the Chiefs would have had twenty million dollars in cap space right there. They wouldn't have had to redo any restructures or or anything. When did this happen exactly? On Tuesday, right after got teams like the Vikings, teams like the uh, uh, the the New England Patriots, teams like the Colts supposedly asked about Sneed and then and then dipped out. Teams like where the Titans were really really close to uh, uh, to trading for. For Sneed, but then once the Ridley deal got done there, they pulled out. So it, it just it went once that that restructure happened. That restructure was basically to absorb being able to have Legarius Sneed play on the on the cap and still have some flexibility. So you also have to look at the timing of when that happened. That happened early in the week, meaning the Chiefs at that point in time, right there, didn't necessarily see us a a, a a trade happening 
for Legereus Sneed at that time. So that's why I think at this point, a lot of it is from the Sneed's camp trying to drive up interest, trying to drive up uh, the price for his services, trying to maybe put the Colts and the Titans against one another. And that's just simply not what's happening. You know, the Colts have their mark on Sneed. We'll pay you this month. And if you're interested, then we can talk. But that, that starting price of $22 million for Sneed, it's just not where it's going to be. And I know I've rambled on for about 10 minutes, so I apologize, Drake, on all no, of this. No, you're good. Love so it. That's, that's where things currently stand with the Indianapolis Colts and Legereus Sneed. The Colts did inquire about Sneed, but because of the price and, and the guarantees and everything that, that are sitting there that Sneed wants – the Colts aren't going to go past that. If Snead is willing to go down, the Colts will talk. The Colts will, will, will kind of revisit things. But until until then, Legereus Snead is not on the table for the Indianapolis Colts. And I've got that. I've got that. I wouldn't say source, but that is what I've come from compiling all the information, all the conversations I've had with people over over the weekend, over the past few, over the past week, really. That is the conclusion that I've come to. And it just seems when you put everything together, that is the most logical thing that 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 and where the situation currently sits. And until proven otherwise, it just does not seem like luxurious need will be uh, with the Indianapolis Colts next season. Yeah, and you to make this brief, first off, that round of applause to you for actually explaining the whole thing because I, I feel like people need to understand that the Chiefs, while they do, while they'd love to keep Sneed, okay, if they can get a hell of a deal for him and 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 get picks and potentially a player, and they don't have to fork over that kind of money for the guy, and they don't have to worry about the franchise tag getting paid by them, dude, they're going to absolutely be okay with letting him go. Now, on the other end of it, Sneed's camp, they're trying to make this man as much money as humanly possible. As they should. Have, as they should, because that's their entire career and what mm -hmm. they are supposed to do. And what better way to do it than I am the highest paid in the entire NFL at my position, and it's a difficult position, arguably one of the hardest positions to play in the league. OK, then you have to think about the Colts. OK, they were at like 73, 74 million dollars in cap space when this all started after getting guys back like Pittman, Stewart, Moore. They've had a slew of re-signings and I think they got Flacco and then they had Raekwon Davis. Those are the only two outside ones. You're now down to 23 million dollars in cap space. That's what it costs to retain and extend and keep your pillars to build for your future around guys like Anthony Richardson. It costs freaking money so right now the Colts are actually sitting at 23 million which is still good it's still 13th in the league but they don't have an an incredible amount of money to blow okay now I think that the last part of it is if they if he was around that price point that they premature or that they uh uh they predestined they get this price point in their mind of what they're going to pay annually or long term or whatever regardless it's a money amount that they're not going to go over and they're disciplined with that that's why the Colts are never in cap trouble really okay i know everyone wants to spend all the money but you also don't want to end up in cap hell where you can't do almost you really can't do anything you have to dump players off i think that like you said sneed probably went over that and you know it, it right now it, it's not looking good it's not looking good that he's going to become an indianapolis colt it's looking more like especially i love that you brought up patrick mahomes um restructuring of his contract teams do that when they want to keep a star they want to keep somebody that is important to them, that they're willing to restructure their quarterback, who, by the way, is the most important part of their entire system there in Kansas City, and he's the best player in the league. You're willing to restructure his contract, and he is too. That tells me that they are absolutely trying to absorb what will be a huge contract. So don't be surprised, people, if Legereus Sneed doesn't even leave Kansas City and he's donning a Chiefs uniform in 24. At this point, that's the most likely option. Yeah, you know, and yeah. and 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 Drake, I want to get back to something too. I mean, I don't even think it's a it's a necessarily a cap issue. If the the Colts, if they they absolutely could fit Legereus need that's fair. into the cap if they really wanted to. You know, you could you can re you could restructure DeForest Buckner. You could restructure or extend DeForest Buckner. Excuse me. You could restructure Quentin Nelson's contract. You could restructure uh, uh Braden Smith's contract. They could make plenty of cap space to absorb. Legereus Jerry Sneed. Uh, what what the bigger issue is, and I I don't think it's I I think for one I think it's 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 not the be all end all of why this deal would not go through, but it is something that has to be uh, uh has to be 
thought about, you know, and, and I think it's, it's cash versus cap, you know? So when, when you're dealing with something of, of cash versus cap, of course the cap number is, is how much you can spend, but cash flow as well is, is when you're, when you're looking at the guaranteed money of, of these, of these contracts, you know, that money needs to immediately be put into escrow. That is the actual cash number that has to be put into escrow for those players right at that time. Okay. So when you look at that, some, a lot of times that's not thought of by, by a lot of people, but in, in this case it needs to be. And that is why you see a lot of the, a lot of the guys like, like Mike Chappell, uh, uh, Stephen Holder, uh, bring up, you know, that the Colts have spent $200 million this off season. It's because a lot of that, all that guaranteed money, not the 200, I think it's around 130 to 140 million guaranteed that immediately has to be put into escrow. That money it has to be there right now. And when you're talking about teams that are in lower markets, like the Indianapolis Colts, or you're talking about owners that don't have another stream of income outside of football, it could be challenging. Now, this is not me sticking up for Jim or say, or, or anything like that. And, and, and saying, you know, that, that, or, or, or anything to say that, that the Colts wouldn't be able to do this. Not at all. That's just the reality of the situation you know, and, and whether you want to criticize the, the Colts for not being able to, to put more money forward, uh, or, or not, that's your prerogative, but that's simply what's, what's happening right now. You know, the Colts gave a lot of guaranteed money. So if you look at it, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but as of right now, they're one of the biggest spenders in, in free agency this year. Yes, it's on their own guys, but in terms of total money and in guaranteed money, the Colts are close to the top there to, to retain their own guys. That matters. You know, I think a lot of people don't take that as serious, Drake, uh, because when you're looking at things like this, uh, uh, you're not really considering how much money these guys that you're re-signing because they're at the end of the day, they're, they're free agents too. You know, their, their, their money doesn't mean any less than bringing in a, a guy from a guy from the street, you know? So it doesn't, it doesn't matter if they were on the team previously or not. That's still the, that, that cash needs to be in there. So what the, the Jim Mercer is never going to admit that the Colts are never going to admit that. But when you're dealing with a small market as Paul Wilson, thank you so much for the $5 super chat, buddy. Really, really appreciate it. Small market matters. You know, and, and that's something that unfortunately the Colts have, just have to deal with, you know, it, it's, they're not like a, a team like the Los Angeles Rams or, or a team like the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys haven't really spent much either, you know, uh, but, but the, 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 the teams that are worth more, the owners that are worth more, I should say, uh, they don't have to worry about that as much. And, and as far as putting as much guaranteed money in there right at that time. So that's something that a lot of people don't really think about, but it's definitely something that, that is, it has an, it has an impact. And, and to say it doesn't is, is just not being truthful. Now, is it the, the be all end all? Like I said, absolutely not. You know, Jim Mercer loves his team, wants to go win Super Bowls, but at the same time, he's not going to go out there and give 80 some million dollars guaranteed to a cornerback that number one, I mean, guys, yes, LeJarrius Sneed, great cornerback, but you also have to look at it objectively. LeJarrius Sneed has never made a Pro Bowl. LeJarrius Sneed has never made an all pro team. You know, uh, you're not talking about the top corner in the NFL. I can on, on one hand or at least one hand, I can name five, at least five corners right now that are better than Legereus Sneed. So when, when you're talking about all of that and, and, and talking about a guy that still has some question marks of how he plays in the regular season, yes, he has performed in the postseason, but is that because he's with the chiefs or is it because of that's that he just simply tries to turn it on? Okay. There's still question marks with Legereus Sneed. It's not 100%. It's not 100% a done deal. You're talking about the best cornerback in the NFL. So all of those things matter when you're talking about this discussion and why or why not the Colts haven't traded for Sneed. Yes. And to make this brief at the end of the day, guaranteed money is becoming 
the biggest part of, of contracts. It wasn't until the the infamous Deshaun Watson two hundred thirty mm-hmm. million guaranteed deal happened, and then you saw a trend, and you saw it start right after that with Lamar, and then you saw it just continue, and it has snowballed to massive quantities in the twenty twenty four off season. So don't be surprised if you know if you're looking at hypothetically, let's say he was looking at a four year. Let's just say twenty million a year. Let's just say eighty million total. Don't be surprised if like fifty-five to sixty million of that is being negotiated to be guaranteed. I mean, it's it is a different league now. They want their guaranteed money because their health is on the line. They're playing they're playing a sport that is a contact sport, so they want to make as much money as possible. So um, you can't blame them, but you also can't blame the Indianapolis Colts for not wanting to just fork over all that cash for a guy like you said that. Probably isn't a top five cornerback. He might be right outside of that, but he's not a top five cornerback, which guess what? That means he doesn't really deserve to reset the market. Appreciate the the super chat again, Colts House. Uh, really, uh, all of your support is is fantastic. Colts House says draft first and trade up for Kool Aid. Mm keeps the cap low i don't think the colts are going to be tra- I, I, on my honest you don't, opinion, you don't have I don't, to trade up for cool you don't have to trade up for yeah. Kool-Aid. i think kool yeah. mckinstry will be there in the second round oh yeah uh, and as far as verse i just i don't think that edge rusher is going to be the, the priority for the indianapolis colts uh, at this point it's either still going to be a pass catcher whether it's brock bowers brian thomas jr or a cornerback in terry and arnold and, and quinion mitchell i think those are the four guys that i would put in that category currently but really appreciate your thoughts buddy thank you as always so much for the super chat uh it does mean a lot to us so so drake i kind of gave all of my opinions there uh let's let's just real quick well not even real quick i want to i want to hear kind of what 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 you what your gut feeling is telling you with all of this information and everything that we've heard and dissected do you believe that a deal gets done for legerious need to the indianapolis colts and if so when do you think that happens Oh, man. You know, if I had to say, like, right off the top of my head, I would I, I would say that it it doesn't. I would say it doesn't get done. And I know that's going to break the hearts of so many Colts fans because, really, this defense needs help at cornerback. And they might need it seriously because outside of Kenny Moore and Juju Brents and Dallas Flowers, who did show some promise but it's still a question mark, you don't have really much else. Okay, and it's a passing league and a dangerous one in the AFC. So you can't afford to have crappy corner play anymore. And it really made the pass rush look a little worse from a pressure standpoint. So I think it's important to make this happen. But uh, real quick, I'm just going to go ahead. I know this might not be the sexiest thing to do, but some of these free agents that are cornerbacks that are still available, people, Xavier Howard, Adore Jackson, Stephon Gilmore, Avante Maddox, You still have C.J. Henderson, who has not been signed. All right. You have seen guys go within the division. I don't think they're going to get a guy like Rocky seen, but maybe they go Shaq Griffin. Okay, there are still veterans where they're like, holy cow, this guy is going to provide just right on the cusp of what we need. But maybe a draft pick or two can help with that. Okay, there's guys that can't that can make it work. I think Xavier Howard is an underlying guy because he had one bad year. And again, it's a what have you done for me me lately league up to last year. Xavier Howard was making pro bowls. He was leading the league in picks at times. He had 10 one year, seven another. The guy's one year removed. Okay, and he's only 30 years old, man. I mean, he could have a resurgent year and he's not going to cost a lot of money. Dude has fallen. He's still a free agent at this point. I just don't think it's going to happen. But if it did happen, I really don't think it happens soon just because of what we've seen. It's been so quiet all over the place with news leaks. I think it happens more around the beginning to mid-April, kind of like what Diane, uh, Diane Rossini said about uh, you know around the draft time. So you're going to have to wait, Colts fans. If this happens, I think it's going to be a lot longer because they're still, in my opinion, negotiating that guaranteed money. Shout out to the goat Logan Schmidt. Really appreciate you, buddy. I know you've been you've been quite loud on X uh, about all of this. And, it's hey, frustrating. Man, it's, it, it is. is. It's frustrating. But hey, it I, mean, you, I don't. It's hard to find a guy that loves the Colts more than Logan Schmidt. <laughs> really appreciate you, buddy. You're an absolute rock star. Uh, so you said you guys have calmed my nerves. Well, hey, hopefully, hopefully that that we're doing that for multiple fans uh, tonight. Just trying to give you the the entire picture and all of this. And like I said, like I said, Drake. 
as of right now, I don't think a deal gets done. I don't. I think LeJarius nope. Sneed ends up playing on the tag next year with the Kansas City Chiefs. And and really, if, if he doesn't come down from that mark of wanting to reset the market, I mean, the, 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 then the Colts are not going to have interest. And, and the Colts aren't going to block it down either. They've set their mark, and, and I think they're willing to move on. Now, we still haven't seen we still haven't seen them move on as far as making moves at the cornerback position, but you guys also have to remember, I know it doesn't seem like it because last week was an absolute and this weekend was an absolute whirlwind. It's March 18th. The uh, one week from one week from today was the start of the legal tampering period. Drake, you ran through some really good names there. My personal favorites, as far as the cornerback market is concerned, Xavier Howard, like you said, I think a one-year deal would would be would be very nice. I don't think Stefan Gilmore is a realistic option considering he requested a trade out of Indy. Would be fantastic because Gilly yeah. Lock can still play, uh, uh, but I, I just don't see that happening. Uh, I know that that Shaquille Griffin um, ha, ha, was on the Colts radar a couple of seasons ago. I don't know about that now. I think Akello, Akello Witherspoon would be a fantastic a cornerback for the Indianapolis Colts long fits what Gus Bradley wants. And I think that would give you some, a veteran presence. Uh, 28 years old was the Rams best cornerback a season ago. Uh, there's guys out there, you know, uh, Steven Nelson, uh, from the Houston Texans and another good option, I think. So, uh, I think it's, uh, there, there's still guys out there. And as far as the safety market is concerned, there's still, again, there's still safeties out there. Uh, if I if you want to look a little bit further, I mean Quandre Diggs. I know the Colts have been in contact uh, with Quandre Diggs. Uh, if you want to look at at other safeties, Julian Blackman obviously I think is still on the table. He's with the Buffalo. He's visiting the Buffalo Bills, like Drake said. Uh, mm-hmm. But but he is still an option. Uh, I know the Colts have contacted about Justin Simmons. We'll kind of see where where that all goes. Uh, but there's still there's still some names out there guys that that the Colts could really look into uh and and we'll have to see I mean if if they don't address any any of these throughout the rest of the uh uh, the free agency period then you're kind of pigeonholing yourself going into the NFL draft and and then I think yeah I mean I'm not I'm not a a Chris Ballard apologist if you want to go criticize that man go for it I mean it doesn't it doesn't it's no skin off of my back and if he doesn't address either one or at least start bringing in some talent at either one of those positions he absolutely should deserve criticism for it because as of right now I'm not confident in that safety group when you're talking about Nick Cross (laughs) uh, 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 Rodney Thomas the second Daniel Scott Trevor Denbo currently as your as your top four safeties absolutely not uh the cornerback group you'd be rolling out the same group you did last year you can expect are you gonna you can expect probably those guys to take a jump but it just it, it needs to be more than that you know whether and if they draft somebody again we'll kind of have to see but you, again you don't you don't want to pigeonhole yourself going into the draft where it's like oh oh crap i don't have we don't have uh, another guy opposite of juju brent's that we're 100% confident in. And then we have to draft Quinion Mitchell or have to draft Terry and Arnold. Uh, and then you lose out potentially on Brock Bowers or, or Brian Thomas Jr. Something like that. That's just not how you build a good roster. So at the end of the day, do I think a trade gets done? No. Is there still time for the Colts to make some moves and, and bring in quality talent? Absolutely there is. However, if they don't if within the next few weeks or so and they let this thing drag out too long and, and don't make those moves and guys just come off the board, absolutely. Then then the 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 front office have have taken a uh, a solid start to the to the offseason as far as re-signing their own, have completely tanked it, in my opinion. And and it's gonna be hard to to really rebound that with with just a draft class moving forward sarah shout out to you uh really appreciate your super super chat uh sarah says thank you drake and andrew i'm ready to move on and i think for the most part drake a lot of colts fans are are just ready to move on uh from this saga sarah thank you so much again for the super chat but but guys that's that's the notebook that's everything that i have found out about about the scene situation where it stands now Hopefully you you enjoyed that. Otherwise, we'll we'll kind of have to see. Otherwise, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is this is what this is what's on the table right now. This is where things currently stand, and and we'll have to kind of see how the Colts and and Chris Ballard adjust 
pivot and and are still able to bring in quality quality guys in the secondary to help make this team better for for 2024. Yeah, and uh, you know, just just to uh, address something in the in the chat real quick. So, Ryan Wilson, here here's what here's what I'm going to say about Legarius Sneed being a top five corner. Okay, to make it very brief, he is not a top five cornerback. Just plain and simple. If in fact, if you look at the PFF grades, Jalen Johnson, Deron Bland, Sauce Gardner, Trent McDuffie, by the way, his own teammate is far superior in, in all those grades. I would take Trent McDuffie over Legarius Sneed. Sneed actually allowed f- over 50% of the of the targets he received to be caught. All right, now, while he was one of the most targeted guys in the league, he also is not the most effective tackler. He's not the most effective in run defense. The Colts love a cornerback and a safety that stick their nose in there and get it done in run defense. Okay, there's – there's I, I just named players that I would take at cornerback over over Legereus Sneak right now. Okay, like – and and there's probably a few others that – we don't need to get into it's 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 purely opinion man and and we really appreciate you commenting in there but um we we personally feel like he's right on the cusp of top five but he is not top five and and he does not deserve to reset the market he just doesn't i mean um if the colts make a play for him and it's the right price it makes sense okay but he's also got some incredible talent on that defense all right you put him in with the colts maybe he regresses because almost all of the responsibilities being thrown on him. There's a lot of question marks, which is why this thing's taken so damn long to either get to a yes or a no, but it's just a mere opinion. We don't think he's a top five corner, but we do think that he's around that area just outside of it. But it's just, again, it's just the metrics show it. And um, you know, it's, it's also purely opinion because this is sports and it's all about opinions. I mean, <laughs> so. I would say, I would say Jair Alexander, uh, Denzel Ward, uh, Jalen Ramsey, uh, we go a little bit farther. I think Trent McDuffie is better than Legarius Sneed. I think Jalen. I, mean, I think Jalen Johnson. Uh, I think Sauce Gardner. I think Tra- I think uh, Traverius Ward uh, from the San Francisco 49ers is is better. Uh, and that's that's just that's just simply right. Again, that's off the top of my head. Uh, you if you watch the film, you consistently see those guys don't struggle in the regular season like Legarius Sneed you know and and i i just that's if if you think if you think that legere sneed is a top five corner you know show us you know show show the the statistics or or show the film clips that you think uh, of legere sneed being better show show the analytics uh that you think but you just can't come out and say you know legere sneed's a top five cornerback when he's he's hasn't proven it you know could he be a top five corner absolutely you know, uh, but, but show, you know, you gotta, you gotta show the proof if, if you think that he's a bona fide top five corner, because the accolades, uh, they're just, the, the accolades aren't there. The statistics aren't there. When you look at the analytics, they're not there either. So you, you gotta, you gotta you kind of show that to prove that Legarius Sneed is a top five corner and that he is, he, he's willing for to 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 get that money and if another team offers him that money i mean go go right ahead absolutely take that if you're legerious sneed my opinion he's not worth 22 million dollars a year okay is he worth maybe 19 million a year should he be up there in in that category absolutely but he's he's not worth 22 million dollars a year he doesn't completely change a secondary he's a great piece on a secondary but he doesn't completely change a secondary. That's what those top five guys in the NFL uh, are, are supposed to be. Drake, let's talk about a guy that actually was signed by the Indianapolis Colts, and that's Trey Sermon. You know, Trey, we, we pivot from luxurious need to Trey Sermon. Uh, kind of a weird segue there, but hey, Trey Sermon, who showed some flashes with the Colts uh, as, as a depth piece uh, at running back, agrees to a one-year, $1.05 million deal, adds depth at the running back position. I think now the, the top five, four running backs uh with the Colts are obviously Jonathan Taylor, Evan Hall, Trey Sermon and and uh Tyler Goodson. So really the Colts didn't lose anybody from that backfield except for Zach Moss and and you would think that that a potential draft pick is on the way or or a potentially uh, Evan Hall uh in his in his which is going to be his de facto rookie season since he only played one game last year. Uh you can see uh, 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 Evan Hall kind of taking on a bigger role with the Indianapolis Colts in, in 2024. Yeah. And I think the, the fact that Zach Moss went off to the Bengals, you know, earned himself a starting, a starting role and, and, and gets to be featured there. I think the Colts just said, Hey, you know, for a third string running back, let's just keep this thing in house. 
you know, let's go with the guy that, that Shane Steichen knew from Philly, you know, and then he knew him from last year and he did show some sparks. Now, Trey Sermon, I think overall has underperformed in his career, based, especially based off of his draft stock. Um, but I also think that a million dollars is not that much to pay a player. So why not see what he can do? Can he factor in really well? Could he potentially, we have no idea what the hell Evan Hull's going to do. I think he's, I think he's going to be a great receiving back for sure. But if he doesn't live up to the, to, to his hype, what happens if Sermon takes that role, you know, and he's the RB too. So I think Trey Sermon's earned it, especially since Zach Moss wasn't retained and we'll see what he can do. It's a good depth signing for sure. I know we say that a lot, but you need those depth signings. You have to have them. You do. You, you, you definitely need those, those depth signings. And, and, but this doesn't, I don't think, uh, limit the Colts from, from potentially taking a running back in a draft on, on day three, uh, Trey Sermon's definitely going to have to earn his, earn that role as, as the, the quote unquote number two back. If, if Evan Hall is going to be the change of pace third down back either way, you, you hope that really not, not many of he doesn't see the field for many of it. Cause Jonathan Taylor is going to be that bell cow back. And as a Colts fan, you're, you're probably hoping Jonathan Taylor stays healthy and can, and can be the Jonathan Taylor of old all season long so drake let's talk about other colts news and rumors from from this weekend and 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 this past week uh and one of them just so happened to uh take place today julian blackman uh we already talked about it set to visit the buffalo bills uh that would be a very huge departure for the indianapolis colts just considering they haven't added anything to the safety room there. Uh, so Julian Blackman coming off of a career season after that move from free safety to strong safety uh, would be a big miss for the Indianapolis Colts. Really the only, only top guy they haven't decided to bring back. I know they're kind of letting the market dictate itself on Julian Blackman. He has a few teams that are interested, uh, but he hasn't received the, the robust market that some of the other safeties had on the open market. Drake, you're on mute. <laughs> I personally, I personally wish they would have retained Julian Blackman just because I know one of the big things is the guy's injury history. Okay. And then again, it surfaced its head with a different injury this time in 2023, albeit at the end of the season, but in the most crucial games, you know, he's out for six a week, 16 and, or excuse me, 17 and 18. Um, and, and it was due to a shoulder injury, but man, the guy was coming off of a career season. You know, he led the team in interceptions with four, with still missing two games. He set career highs in tackles, tackles for loss. I mean, passes defended. He was all over the field. He's a key communicator in the secondary too. And I just, I don't think he's going to cost that much money, but it goes back to two things. And I think this is why they're letting him test free agency. Number one, I think that the injury history, you can't ignore it. All right. right. It, it sucks. And he had a terrible injury. One of his seasons barely played. The other thing is, I wonder if he's asking for too much money. I wonder if 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 it's just over what the Colts are wanting to pay. Because remember, guys, whether it's luxurious Sneed level signings or it's just a depth signing, the Colts put their mark right at something regardless. I think that they've got a little bit more leeway with in-house free agents, but they have a they have a concrete benchmark. And if it goes over that, they're out of the game. They really want to take care of their players and you know, I, like I said, I think if it's an in-house free agent, maybe there's a little more wiggle room, but like I said, maybe his agent's just convincing him to ask for way too much money, but I would err on the side of maybe injury history has something to do with it. And plus you've got some good safeties in this upcoming draft that potentially could replace him. I don't like it though. I, I wish they'd just retain the damn guy and not let him go work out with other teams. <laughs> so They're, they're definitely let black letting black been set set the market you know finding out the price and and we'll see if the, if blackman gives the colts an opportunity to uh to match that uh we'll have to see if if not then the blackman could be out the door and the colts are looking uh, uh for a new starter at, at strong safety very well could be on the way as well uh or anyways you know uh so, so we'll have to see it's definitely something to monitor uh but losing blackman without having a uh six either a secession plan in place or or having another another safety on the way uh definitely definitely would is is a little bit concerning and and something that again is going to potentially really hurt this colts team when 
it when it comes to to next season. Uh, but the Colts did work out a safety. As we move on to our, our, our next one here, it looks like the Colts have uh, held Chief Safety Mike Edwards uh, to a free agent visit. Mike Edwards uh, uh, is it seems like he he was a starter in in the uh, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, in 2022. Came over to the Kansas City Chiefs and and was more of in a in a reserve role uh, at the safety position. Did start five games. Had I think 51 tackles. Uh, I think he. Had had an, an interception and, and a couple of fumble return uh, fumble recoveries. Uh, one that he returned, uh, I think, was 101 yards for for a touchdown. Uh, but so so Mike Edwards, more of in my opinion, uh, a depth safety. Uh, you're not really looking for Mike Edwards to be your starter at the safety position. It, it, you would see Mike Edwards potentially getting the veteran minimum to be a, a depth signing with the Indianapolis Colts, but I don't think this would be your 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 solution to the safety problem in in the slightest, really. No, and it, it better it better damn not be uh, because, like, look, don't get me wrong. Again, decent depth safety. He's a decent like rotational piece, but your safety room right now is you got to remove Julian Blackman because he's a free agent. So you're looking at strong safety is Nick Cross. This is your starter. Free safety is probably Rodney Thomas the second. And then you you start kind of talking about Daniel Scott. You have no idea what he's going to do. I, I still think he's more of a special teamer. You wrote the rookie file on him, Andrew, and you, you even mentioned that dude had over 600 special team snaps. So don't expect Daniel Scott to go out there. Not saying he can't, but don't expect him to go out there and just be an otherworldly Antoine Winfield, Jesse Bates type of safety. But then you've got Ronnie Harrison, who's really more of a linebacker who used to play safety, played it for like 10 snaps for the Colts. But like they need it. They need safety. They need a def- they need. If it's not Julian Blackman, expect a day two pick to potentially be a guy like Jaden Hicks or or, or, a, or a, a safety in the draft because you cannot have – no offense to Rodney Thomas. He needs to prove he's worth a starting role. You can't have him and Nick Cross out there. One guy is has shown he's probably a backup, and the other guy is still a question mark, albeit showed some promise, but not enough so you feel really comfortable with Nick Cross being your starting strong safety. Yeah, I would agree. And I think the Colts want Nick Cross more as a free safety anyway than, than as a starting uh, uh, strong safety. Uh, I think they want to take advantage of his athletic ability as that as a free safety, as that cover guy. Uh, because, I mean, you really you, you want your strong safety as your, as your top guy uh, uh, to be the, the communicator in the back end. I'm not sure. I'm just not sure that, that Nick Cross is there yet. Again, we'll, we'll have to see on that. But but here's some other let's talk as we're talking about some free agents. Here's some of the other. Colts targets, you, you know, that, that have potentially signed elsewhere or that we've uh, heard reported uh, that that they were they were uh, in on starting with A.J. Dillon, uh, potential uh, backup running back to Jonathan Taylor. He re-signed with the Packers. Hollywood Brown, I know you were really high on, on Hollywood Brown. Drake, he ends up going to the Kansas City Chiefs. I think he'll be phenomenal in that offense. For $7 million. $7 million, the potential to earn up to eleven. Re- really nice signing by the Chiefs. Perfect and I, 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 I think Brown is going to be a, a really nice fit with, with Patrick Mahomes in that offense. Uh, and then you go to the defensive side of the ball. Quick and Jefferson uh defensive tackle depth went with the Browns uh from there Kendall Fuller Kendall Fuller was a guy we were really really high on you know uh Kendall Fuller uh to what ended up going to the uh, to the Miami Dolphins uh, he'll be playing opposite of of Jalen Ramsey so the Dolphins lo- uh, released Xavier Howard but they ended up going with Kendall Fuller and and for a, a, a cheaper value deal Drake. So I, I do think that uh, uh, the Dolphins got a steal when it comes to Kendall Fuller. Yeah. And, and you know, the fact that I actually liked Kendall Fuller to the Colts, I, I thought that Kendall Fuller fit, he fit the bill perfectly. I think that Kenny Moore needs another veteran. Uh, I still wouldn't be surprised if you see a, a cornerback signing, but you're looking outside of a Dory Jackson, who's like 28. You're looking at probably a veteran. Okay, you're going to be taking a guy that's like Xavier Howard that's 30 or someone that's like 31. I I still think Indianapolis is going to do potentially a double dip at at cornerback or wide receiver. I think those are two crucial positions you have to address in the draft, but I I still wish they could have at least gotten Kendall Fuller, especially for the money. I feel like that could have been a pretty nice impact signing and not cost a lot either. 
Yeah, I, I would agree. And then the safety market, there's some other big time safeties that have gone off the board. Uh, Cam Curl with the with the Rams on a, on a pretty cheap deal. Darnell Savage with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Deshaun Elliott signed with the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then Jordan Fuller with the Carolina Panthers. So there are still some some value, some good safeties out there. But again, the Colts at this point, you can't really let them sit on there. You can't really sit on your hands. You know, you got to be in on these signings if you want to upgrade your safety room. Otherwise, you risk going into the draft with with one of the worst safety rooms uh, in the entire NFL. And and you don't want to pigeonhole yourself into having to take up to draft uh, a certain position uh, if if you don't have to. So there are still some safeties out there, Drake, that I think the Colts will uh, uh, will do pretty will will be involved in. I know they have contacted quite a few of those safeties, but but obviously the secondary is still the biggest need uh, for the Indianapolis Colts and something they need to improve on uh, before we get to before we get to training camp. Yeah, yeah, and. Um... A couple things in the chat, Ryan Wilson, man. I appreciate you putting each one of uh, Sneed's best games in the chat. Now talk about the nine games where he allowed three or more catches, okay? And talk about the games where he allowed seven catches and five catches. I, it's all opinion, man. We respect the hell out of you for for joining. I also love the fact that uh, Jesse Bond said Fuller should have been the number one for Ballard, but Ballard failed. Now. I think that there is an argument at this point that maybe, maybe not even maybe, I think that there isn't an argument brewing that the Colts are waiting a little too much to hit some of these needs and, and guys are getting picked up. Guys are getting grabbed. I still think there's some guys they can still get, but I'll say this. I think that Ballard will have failed if like the Colts still haven't signed a cornerback and you're relying completely on the drafts. I know there's some guys that we've talked about too. Quinion Mitchell is one of the top guys that we've talked about guys like Nate Wiggins, great corners, but they're going to be rookies. I, I really think, and I think Andrew, you can agree with me too. I think the Colts have got to get themselves a veteran corner, whether, whether it's a trade for Snead or a, a, a cornerback like a Dory Jackson or, or a Xavier Howard, regardless of how the hell they do it or how much they give away or pay, they need a veteran corner in there. They can't just get a couple of rookies and say, Hey, join Juju Brents, Jalen Jones, Daryl Baker, Jr. Dallas flowers and veteran Kenny Moore. I mean, I'm not resetting the cornerback market for a guy that's never made it, never been an all pro simple as that. So, uh, let's, but, but Drake, yeah, I do think that the Colts need to, uh, need to definitely look at cornerback and, and safety, you know, because if, if it's not addressed, then, then you can pretty much pencil in uh, a cornerback in, in round one and, and a safety yep. in round two, you know, yep. Terry and Arnold uh, or Quinion Mitchell, probably likely in, in round one. And then in the round two, you're looking at guys like if they're still picking around 46, you know, you're probably thinking of, of Jaden Hicks, Cole Bishop, uh, some of those. I don't think Tyler Nubbin will be uh, uh, either. He won't be there. And I don't think he really fits the, the athletic profile of, of what the Colts want to do, but Jaden Hicks and Cole Bishop definitely do. Uh, so yeah. we'll have, again, we'll have to see. Uh, I, I, again, I think it would be a, a massive disservice to this roster if the Colts don't address it in free agency before the draft. And again, we're still very early in free agency too. There's still a lot of names out there. Usually the, the, the second and third wave is when the Colts make the majority of their moves in free agency. So it wouldn't surprise me a bit if when we're talking here next Monday uh, in a couple shows from now that we're talking about a couple different signings or even on Thursday. You know, uh, another signing at cornerback or at safety as the Colts start to address these needs as we get into into April and get closer to draft season. Yeah, and look, at the end of the day, the Colts are in an interesting position because they're not trying to win now. They're not trying to rebuild for the future. I've said this multiple times. It's not a team. It's not a position a lot of teams are in where you're trying to add weapons for a developing quarterback, one of the younger rosters in the league. There's a lot of ways you can do it. You can trade for a cornerback. You can sign guys. You can address it in the draft. It's going to be interesting because Ballard now has his quarterback. He's got a couple playmakers on offense, a couple key people on defense. You've got your coach. You've got your staff. You got to go make it happen somehow. The, the, let's just say this for the people that are out there hating Chris Ballard. I think that he's running out of excuses. If he doesn't get something something done this season or next season, I think you're starting to see him run out of excuses. This is the time to make it happen. So hopefully a little bit of money gets spent on the right pieces. It's it's free agency is only a weekend and uh so already <laughs> already this this Colts fan base wants to uh uh burn burn everything down. But 
hey, relax. Let's let's wait to see what plays out over the coming months uh, before we're we're ready to to sharpen our pitchforks and head to West Fifty Sixth Street. So that's our show for this evening, guys. Really appreciate everybody tuning in uh, to talk about uh, the, all these rumors surrounding Legarius Sneed and the Indianapolis Colts, and and kind of just setting the record straight of where exactly we're at right now, and and what's going what has gone on and gone into to all of this you know so uh really fun discussion want to thank all of our super chats uh for this evening Truett, yim colt's house echo warrior paul wilson uh logan schmidt the goat and sarah thank you all so much and everyone else that tuned in uh and and, and chatted with us this evening if you haven't done so please go follow us on all of our socials like horseshoe huddle on facebook follow at colts on fn on x and subscribe to the horseshoe huddle youtube channel hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode uh when we go live on monday and thursday nights or for special breaking news episodes you never want to miss uh, uh an episode here at the horseshoe huddle uh and to join in on the chat it's always as it's always a good time especially tonight pretty pretty spicy in there uh, as i can see but if you can't catch us on youtube apple spotify google wherever you listen to podcasts we're on there as well so make sure you subscribe give us a five star review so we can reach other colts fans just like you drake i know you've been writing away on horseshoehuddle.com like all of us uh, uh so so, so tell the people what they can go check out that you've written and uh, and uh, maybe maybe find some more things to to spice up more debates about. Uh, but but what what things you got cooking on the site? So I, I the last two I did, there's been just a bunch of moves happening. And during this time, a lot of us just sit around waiting for for news to just, you know, machine gun out. But grading the Colts roster moves from the 2024 offseason. Um, so I go through each individual one, give my own opinion, because remember, everyone. Sports is an opinion. And then I do three free agents the Colts should have signed. And I have a very emphatic opinion on one wide receiver that is now a freaking chief that is going to fit Patrick Mahomes way too well. So go check those out. <laughs> Make sure you check that out uh, for myself. I think I have about nine different articles that I've written on horseshoehuddle.com <laughs> over the past few weeks, over the past week. I don't think I've, I've even been able to, uh, to breathe, uh, but but honestly, uh, the, 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 the main ones that you should go check out are, are the ones where the, where the players talked about their, their re-signings and kind of gave, gave a glimpse into how the negotiation period went. Uh, talked to Michael Pittman Jr. And, and how he was able to find a home in Indianapolis. Kenny Moore. Uh, Kenny Moore and, and kind of what he was able to experience in free agency for the first time. Zaire Franklin did not hold back on the expectations for this team next year and for and moving forward. That was a really fun interview to do. Make sure to check that out. And then the newcomer, Raekwon Davis. Raekwon Davis, a, a southern, a southern guy, uh, definitely has some uh, some southern charm and 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 guys that southern accent to him. Looks like he's going to fit in really well with DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart. So make sure to check out his thoughts on joining the Colts, uh, and then check out all the other fantastic writings by our colleagues on horseshoehuddle.com go follow drake at d walster drake you can follow myself at andrew moore nfl and we'll be back thursday night to talk about all the latest colts moves maybe some more rumors who knows maybe a trade even shocks us and, and happens before then but regardless we'll be back here on thursday night to break it all down for you and hey guys guess what D didn't mention this during the show but tomorrow I'll be at Toledo's Pro Day to look at, get an up close and personal Woo! look at Quinion Mitchell. Thursday, Drake and I both are going to be in South Bend at Notre Dame's Pro Day. Cam Hart. Audric Estime, uh, Joe Alt, all of those guys. Sam Hartman. Sam Hartman, my, <laughs> my, my wife's favorite player. Uh, so we're going to be at Pro Days this week, and we'll give you all the information live from the Pro Days of what we've seen and, and try to get you some, some Colts information about that as well. So a lot of stuff going on at Horseshoe Huddle. We appreciate the hell out of all of you. And until next time, everyone, relax. It's all going to be just fine. Let's let let's let the Colts uh, kind of go through free HC in the draft before we're ready to burn everything down. But we'll be seeing you here soon.